It's time to rank all of the running backs in Dynasty Fantasy Football. We're going to go through, I think, 45 or 50 today running backs for your Dynasty League so you know who to prioritize and how we have these guys ranked. Do us a huge favor. If you play Dynasty, make sure you drop a like. Make sure you're subscribed. Let's talk about, again, the top 50 running backs in Dynasty Fantasy Football. This gets gross really fast. It does. And and so the S tier is not as gross. But I will say for a good portion of this year, there really hasn't been a ton of separation from players to get that top running back one spot. Um, theoretically, you know, you could talk about Ashton Genty coming in next year and being the, the running back one in Dynasty for right away. Similar to how you had Bijan come in and do the same thing. Bijan has reclaimed, in my opinion, the number one spot in Dynasty for the running back. One, he's not in a tier of his own, I don't think, but I, you have seen. Right in the nick of time, too. We were <laughs> not that far away from dropping him, but no, he's and, been great. And so. He, he, so he's been fantastic, and... Uh, luckily, his value never really dropped. So if you, you know, yeah. if Bijan was somebody that you moved off your team, you probably still got good value for him. And if you held him, then now you're getting good production value. So he's just all around, in my opinion, been the best running back this year. I think Jameer Gibbs comes in second, just purely based on the fact that Jameer Gibbs is playing in the best offense of any of these guys. And this offense is an offense where I think they said the running backs have scored a touchdown in like 25 straight games now or something like that. Yeah. It's 20, 22 yeah. or 25. Is that an all-time record? I, it's getting close for sure. Yeah. And, and he's also a guy that can play 30, 40, 50% of snaps snaps and still be the running back four in the season so i've been really impressed with jameer gibbs and as you know uh running backs with his skill set in dynasty they tend to last a long time and also in ppr leagues they tend to have more value because you are getting the receiving upside same thing with devon achan who sucked a while he had a concussion but you know what honestly i'm really happy to see devon achan wearing the guardian cap i love it <laughs> he i love it. he took it off of, uh, he took it off this week should i bump him down my rankings <laughs> yes dang it Ah, he, I think he needs the guardian <laughs> cap, but with that, he got tired. I, I still, so you, you, no you, you can't not cap. acknowledge, you can't not acknowledge what Devon Achan has done this season. The running back six, uh, a guy we were telling you to buy before the season. Remember he was on our last preseason buys video. We were like, Hey, Devon Achan, he's a good price. It's baked in that he's, he's small and, and could potentially get a concussion. And he did get a concussion. <laughs> concussion. And then, um, and now he's out there and he's pretty much scoring 20 points since, since Tua came back. So very excited about him. And honestly, I think he's a good dynasty asset to own in the future. And then rounding out this tier, Saquon Barkley, who wouldn't have been in the S tier the last two years. Um, but I think if you've watched Saquon or even taken one look at his numbers, you know why he's in the S tier. The, the dude looks like Saquon. Like Saquon. Like college like, Saquon. Like, like Saquon. So we're, you're, if you have Saquon, freaking jackpot. And then Brees Hall. Brees has been less impressive this season. And you might say, yeah, well, the situation, he's still the running back eight. But you might say, yeah, well, that's because of the situation. Well, the situation doesn't really project to get any better anytime soon. Yeah, they can go out and draft a quarterback. But the thing about the Jets is they have been almost indefinitely dysfunctional. And so I want to see that get better. We do know Brees Hall yeah. in that situation can can still produce. He was running back two last year. So he has to stay in this S tier for sure. We do need Brees. Brees Hall honestly should probably be at the top of this tier or close to the top of this tier. And with the right situation, he can jump back up to the top of this tier. That's what we'll be waiting for. Yeah, he definitely can. And the A tier um, is going to be a bunch of guys that production-wise can have the same uh, upside as some of the guys in the lower part of the S tier, but they're not as safe long-term, I don't think. And that does start with Kyron Williams. Look, with Kyron Williams, uh, he has been super productive until all of a sudden he decided not to be uh, the last few weeks. He's had 10, or, <laughs> 10 straight games. Four straight games of literally 10, 11, 8, and 11 points. The volume is still there. The touchdowns are not. The touchdown was there against Philly uh, this last week, but he hasn't been getting any receiving work the last few games as well. I think a lot of this has had to do with uh, Puka and Cooper Cup both going nuts while they've both been on the field and that has been at the expense of Kyron Williams so that's going to be something to keep an eye on you not only have the the production dip but also just the long-term risk with Coram breathing down his neck it's probably only a matter of time before Coram starts getting opportunities if Kyron starts to lose a step and if he starts having fumbling issues like he did this last game uh, but he will still be at the top of this tier because his volume is still there and he's he's a very very good NFL running back and uh Sean McVay will run him into the ground. He will. So. He, he is very willing to do that to his running backs. <laughs> very he is willing so. to make them retire at 28 if he needs to. <laughs> right. And yeah, with Kyron, honestly, if you wanted to have him even like the middle towards the bottom of this tier, I wouldn't really fight you on it that much. 
it's a tier. Kenneth Walker is going to be the next guy here. Uh, he's been kind of as inconsistent as Kyron Williams has been uh, this season. He, he's had some really, really good games. He's had some really, really bad games. He's gotten banged up, and he's had some okay, like 12 to 14 point games. He, You really don't know what you're going to get from him. And a lot of this, again, similar to Cooper Cup and Puka producing on the field, JSN's emergence has absolutely had an impact on everyone in that offense. And that includes Kenneth Walker and his usage even in the receiving game. So uh, Jonathan Taylor continues to fall down our rankings. <clears throat> we were kind of wrong on him and our take with him. We thought he was a really, really good value this offseason. And uh, he just hasn't lived up to what we thought he could be. Not only is he not punching the ball into the end zone, but he's not getting the consistent volume that we expected. And he just looks like he's kind of lost a step. He's not as fast as he was. That ankle injury has carried over for like two straight years now. And that's something to worry about long-term. He does have the contract insulation though. And you, you know, you would hope that the Colts as an organization would be competent enough to realize that they don't have a coach or a GM and they need to move on and hire Vrabel and uh, get a guy that's actually going to you know, scheme correctly for the assets in that offense. But that's besides the point. Jonathan Taylor is going to be in this range, maybe even lower as we get uh, closer to the offseason if he can't, like, show some production at the end of this year. Uh, James Cook, th this is probably where James Cook is going to stay for a while because he's very consistent in in where he's at production wise he's going to have a couple really really good games i think every single year but his receiving usage and his rushing usage is kind of going to be the same and it's not going to be elite it's not going to be anything crazy out of this world ray davis is going to get some some work probably long term but i don't see uh, anywhere in the near future buffalo going out of their way to draft another elite upside running back i think they're happy with what james cook offers there and with what ray davis is now offering apparently Mm -hmm. So James Cook has been pretty solid, and I really do uh, believe in his price maintaining for the next couple of years when you're talking about looking at running backs in three-year windows. James Cook is probably one of the safer guys, honestly, um, in, in that range. Christian McCaffrey, um, <clears throat> if you want to tell us what to do with CMC, we're happy to listen. I don't think anyone's really going to disagree with this. As long as he's in San Fran and producing at the level that he's capable of, we're cool with it. He's obviously not doing that now. San Fran is definitely uh, – they're, they're – they're kind of they're kind of down right now i would say <laughs> everyone down. is yeah. down and it is at the expense of christian mccaffrey's elite 25 points per game production but again i i do believe that he's he's going to be able to i think his outlook's going to be more positive next year and i don't think he's leaving san fran anytime soon joe mixon uh, has been phenomenal he's obviously coming off of a rough game uh, where he didn't really produce but again it's just one game and with Mixon when you look at the entire sample size of the season so far and his long-term contract that he has with Houston that is guaranteed through 2025 I wouldn't be shocked if they you know carry that on for another year as well uh, he, he's he's great they really have built that offense around running first with Joe Mixon and uh, it's it's worked so um, we'll we'll see what he does long term same with Josh Jacobs obviously you're going to have contract questions with all these guys CMC Mixon and Jacobs at the tail end of this tier but with Jacobs and how good he has been um, of recent you can't not have him in this tier. He had three touchdowns for 28 points against San Fran, 23 points against Chicago in week 11, multiple 20 point games before the bye there as well. And all it took was just the ch the touchdowns to come. So uh, they, they finally arrived. They're finally here to me. This is the Joe Mixon effect of 2023 being reimagined in Josh Jacobs in Green Bay. Uh, th this offense is perfect for what we were looking for in Jacobs, and he looks more explosive than he honestly ever really did uh, in, in Vegas. So I think they are definitely incentivized to keep him around for the next couple of years as long as he's doing what he's doing right now. Yeah, he's been much better than we anticipated, honestly. Yeah. And, you know, Josh Jacobs is one of those guys that we, you know, we're telling some people, depending on what their team is, definitely telling people now to go buy on their team blueprints. And so uh, we do have our 2025 rookie draft guide available version one is out so you could be scouting the rookie running backs i can tell you right now there are at least five running backs that are going to make it on this list right away maybe like seven so you're going to want to get familiar with those guys to so ready for your rookie drafts you also get a free team blueprint uh with code domain with the annual mother flocker tier so you get both those things and the trade calculator and the my teams and the dynasty rankings and all of it at flockfantasy.com slash domain like i said make sure you use code domain annual mother flocker tier unlocks it plus this is the best time of the year to become a site member because right now 
when you sign up with code domain at flockfantasy.com slash domain and you select the annual Mother Flocker tier, you get not one, but two free blueprints with that. So we are going to review two of your dynasty teams when you sign up from now until Cyber Monday. Cyber Monday at 11.59 p.m. is when this sale ends. But right now you can take advantage, get the my teams, you can get the rookie draft guide, you can get the rankings, you can get the trade calculator, all of that plus, again, two team blueprints. This is a, a sale we want. We run once a year, and uh, it's, it's a good time to take advantage of it. So flockfantasy.com slash domain. Like I said, you have to use code domain to unlock. You have to use code domain. You have to use the annual mother flocker tier. So take advantage of the deal while it lasts. But let's get back to the video. So uh, let's jump back in here. Let's go to the B tier. Start with Isaiah Pacheco. The thing about Isaiah Pacheco, while he has been very productive when he's been on the field, is the reason Isaiah Pacheco is on this list is because he was in a system, in an offense, in an organization that was willing, even though he was, what, a fifth round pick, to throw him in as the starting running back because they literally don't care who you are. And who's to say that won't happen to Pacheco? Who's to say they won't do that with somebody else after his next year, which is the last year on his rookie deal? Yeah. Now, granted, if there's an option, I'd expect they're gonna pick it up. I don't know if they're gonna extend him. This is the Chiefs, they don't pay anybody. But if he stays there, he's the top 12 running back in Dynasty pretty easily. So it's all going to be dependent on kind of how they handle Isaiah Pacheco's contract. Derrick Henry's a little bit different, but in the contract sense, kind of the same because he does only have a one-year deal right now. That's right. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's been dominant this year, guys. I don't know how the Ravens don't say come back on a two-year deal and it gives you two more years of production. And then he is staying here because, uh, he again, I we will not. We've said this from this the day we started making Dynasty content. Da Derrick Henry's a unicorn. He's a unicorn, and we will not predict his fall off. We're not getting out a year early on Henry because at this point, people were trying to get out early on Henry four years ago. And if you've held him on your roster, you've won championships. <laughs> yes. Like, seriously, four years ago. You remember that, right? Oh, like, yeah, when, when it was, was 26 when I was years in, old, you're like, it's when coming. When I was in freaking his college, they were doing that. So. Next level, it's coming. Kamara's kind of the same thing. And I think a lot less people have been. Uh, is quick to sell Kamara because he's also receiving back. But he just got an extension too. Yeah, he got an extension. Uh, the Saints are obviously uh, terrible with their cap space, so they really don't care. They're going to have a running back there whether they like it or not. Monty is the same thing as Gibbs playing in that elite offense, but he also got an extension this year. So he is locked down with one of the best offenses in the NFL that looks like – I mean, they have a pretty young core. Jared Goff is probably in the prime of his career. Jameer Gibbs is young. You've got David Montgomery. Yeah. Amon Ross St. Brown is young. Sam Laporta is young. They've got a good offensive line. This is a team that's going to be together. I mean, we're talking yeah. about a three-year window. I'm not sure there are a lot of backs I won over David Montgomery. And then Chase Brown's going to be the last guy. Look, this, is, this basically comes down to, with what Chase Brown has done, I think he has potentially earned a spot for him to be the starting back for the Bengals for the next two years, right? Agreed. This is his second year in the league. If he does play the next two years in this same role, we've seen what he's capable of. He's been the starting back for half the season. He's already a mid-running back, too. Yep. Uh, if he continues this rest of the season, he's going to end up as a running back one. At that point, uh, like, you know, we saw this with Joe Mixon. Joe Mixon was a running back one in this offense, but Chase Brown, uh, they're using him differently than they used Joe Mixon. And it, it has resulted in five targets, 11 targets, seven targets in the last three games in, in games that have been very high scoring. But I don't expect these, I don't expect this to end because the Bengals have a good enough offense to be in shootouts. They don't have a good enough defense to not be in shootouts. And so with that trend continuing, if Chase Brown does get that role in this Bengals offense for the next two years, he is going to be somebody that is very valuable in your dynasty league. So I, I really like him. And honestly, I, it's more just out of respect for what he's done. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, I, I want to say something about Chase Brown too, because some people, I, I mean, we're ranking him here super like this is a super positive ranking of chase brown and yes we're being conservative but there's a reason that we're being conservative with his ranking and again it's nothing about him and what he's done production wise with chase brown just like any running back in this range and the running backs that we're going to talk about in the c tier it's really it, it is this is the hardest time of the season to rank running backs is before we start doing a ton of prospect analysis with the rookie running backs coming in the 2025 class because we know that this is one of the stronger running back classes that, that we've seen in the last few years. And with that in mind, you've got some of these on the bubble running backs that don't have a ton of draft capital investment that maybe have uh, the head coach, ho their head coaching job in limbo with Zach Taylor. He might get fired if they miss out on the playoffs. Even if they make the playoffs barely, they might move on from them. And that's really, really difficult to evaluate. So with Chase Brown, if you want to rank him higher, that's totally fine. Just understand that we're being a 
little more conservative with where he's at because if they take a Nick Singleton in the third round of the draft, then you don't really know what to do with Chase Brown. He's probably still going to be ranked in this range, right? Uh, so with the C tier, we're going to start with DeAndre Swift. Uh, a very similar situation where Roshan Johnson is kind of on the rise. He's getting goal line carries. Swift has really emerged. Um, and now he's kind of come back to earth a little bit. And Shane Waldron now out of that offense. That offense as a whole has looked a lot better. Swift has been hit or miss from a production perspective. His contract is fine. He's got one more year guaranteed in Chicago. We just have never seen Swift maintain consistent production ever. That's a reason why this is his third team in his, what, fifth year? Mm -hmm. So uh, there, there's definitely something be behind that and, and why other teams have moved on from him. Who's to say that Chicago won't decide to move on from him, maybe even next year if they move on from Eberflus and they go get a Ben Johnson on the market or something like that. So uh, nothing against Swift's production right now. It's more of a long-term thing. Chuba Hubbard and Jonathan Brooks are going to be back-to-back -back here. You tell us who's going to be the most productive running back long-term. Chuba just got an extension. They're monetarily invested in Chuba Hubbard heavily now. And they are heavily invested in Jonathan Brooks with his second-round draft capital. I mean, if talk about a dysfunctional organization and they have no idea what the heck they're doing, what are you doing spending that money on a fifth round running back when you just spent a second round pick on Jonathan Brooks? If you planned on paying Chuba Hubbard, why did you draft Jonathan Brooks? Chuba has looked really good, really good. If Jonathan Brooks weren't in that offense after this contract, he would be probably at the bottom of the A tier. Yeah, seriously, he, he would be up there with Mixon and Jacobs and CMC and James Cook because he's been that good. He's a mid running back one on the year right now. He's coming off another 15 point game. So uh, that's a tough one to evaluate, but we're just going to see how much Jonathan Brooks starts to slowly eat into Chuba's workload or not uh, in this last third of the season. And then we'll have a better take on it, I think, going into the offseason. Brian Robinson is going to be next. Uh, he's just kind of going to stay here. Uh, he's he's very, very uh, high floor, low ceiling. And now with Eckler down with the injury, we'll see what B-Rob is able to do without him on the field. Trey Benson is only going to go up from here. Uh, if I were you, I would be heavily investing in Trey Benson right now because he's guaranteed to increase in value with James Conner likely out the door. Uh, then you've got J.K. Dobbins and Tyron Tracy. Uh, Tyron Tracy has been uh, – he, he's shown really good flashes this year. Production-wise, hasn't been ultra consistent. That's fine. It's in a bad offense. We'll see what they look like next year with a better quarterback situation but again this is another one where i'm like are the giants incentivized in any way to just stick with him or to go with a better talented running back in this class no, this I'm year with you. we don't really know which is why he's in the same tier um, as some of these other guys uh, again we were really high on him as a stash in the off season because we knew he'd increase well we knew there was a chance he could increase in value and take singletary's spot he has don't know how long that'll last jk dobbins um the injury history is there at this point, he's being produ he's ultra productive and he's still explosive somehow, um, even with tearing his Achilles and ACL and all that stuff. Uh, we'll see where he ends up next season, hopefully in a situation as good as the Chargers. Hopefully he stays with the Chargers, honestly. That would be ideal. Um, again, though, if I were a betting man, would you bet on the Chargers paying J.K. Dobbins long term or going and getting another running back that they can run into the ground with Greg Roman on a rookie contract? I think I, I don't really know. To me, it's like 50-50 on that yeah. one. So yeah, like, yeah, it's I totally tough. understand. So let's drop down to the D tier here and let's talk about Ramondre. Ramondre's been good at, in, at times this season, but he's been hit or so miss is the problem. It, it is literally so boom bust. He's a Gabe Davis of running He backs. does have contract insulation. For, so of like the zero running back dynasty guys that I like, I really like Ramondre for that reason. Um, and that offense does project to get better as Drake May kind of continues to develop and come into his own there. Bucky Irving and Rashad White will be back to back. Um, I mean, I I heard Gruden say, I don't know what you think about this. I heard Gruden say that he thinks this is the next Detroit two-headed monster, White and Irving. So I think a lot of people looked at this as like Irving potentially replacing White, whereas pretty much what you've seen all season is they've used these Very two complimentary. guys complimentary and, and, and it's worked really well. I think for the next couple of years, both these guys will be good assets to have. They're obviously going to cap each other's ceiling, but they all right. they they've they have proved that they both can produce at the same time. Yep. They've done it multiple weeks this year. So, you know, they're, you know, eating into each other's value a little bit, but both very valuable still. And that offense is still good. Uh, Aaron Jones, it is a good thing Aaron Jones had a good week this week. Otherwise, you know, I don't know what would have happened with Aaron Jones. He just couldn't get into the end zone for the longest time. I do think his time is coming, though, and I think that has to limit his dynasty value a little bit. Tony Pollard here as well. I think I would probably prefer Tony Pollard over uh, most of these guys here, just based on the fact that he is a little bit younger. Um, but he's clearly been better without Tajay Spears this season. You are going to have Tajay there for the foreseeable 
foreseeable future. And so I think that matters as well. And then Najee with Jalen Warren there. Najee's had his best season, in my opinion, since his rookie year. He He's does a have an unrestricted a, free agent next year, too. So And they uh, declined his option, right? Yeah, they did. So that's going to be interesting with Najee. Um, and even Najee's you know, pretty good years still running back 24 right now. So it's not great. I think he's going to have streamable value. And outside of that, you're going to get into the backup range now pretty much. Yeah. What a fall from grace for Travis Etienne uh, at the top of the F tier. I don't think anyone's going to argue with this. The dude has looked absolutely awful. That offense has looked awful. I don't think that he's going to get a really respectable deal at all. I think he's been the worst agency. running back in the NFL. Like he's I can't think super, of anybody worse. Super inefficient. I mean, we predicted a fall off, but I didn't think it would be this bad. I didn't. Holy crap! I did not think it would be this bad. Braylon Allen, uh, Brees Hall's backup. His ceiling is going to be capped indefinitely as long as he is playing for the Jets behind Brees Hall. Uh, yeah, he's going to vulture some touchdowns here or there. Yeah, he's going to have some explosive uh, opportunities because he is a very solid running back. But uh, again. I don't really know what you expect from Braylon Allen, barring an injury. Great handcuff to have if you own Brees Hall. Um, outside of that, there's there's not really a, any reason to think that his outlook is going to be super positive, barring an injury. Tank Bigsby, um, he, he's going to be in Jacksonville for a year longer than ETM. We'll see if he can do anything next year. If he's the only running back remaining, if they draft a running back, we'll see. We don't really know. But Tank Bigsby does have day two draft capital. I would expect them probably to see what they have in him long term for one year before they decide to move on. Uh, then you got Blake Corum, who is probably going to be on the up as well. If you're a rebuild, reload, um, we would recommend that you heavily invest in Blake Corum. It's only a matter of time before uh, Sean McVay decides to run Blake Corum into the ground. His skill set is oh so similar to Kyron Williams. He's a super, super smart runner of the football, high IQ guy, um, and uh, I, Sean McVay just can't wait to move on to the next running back at some point. Uh, it may be a year down the road, honestly. It might not be in 2025. We'll see. Uh, Zach Charbonnet, again, handcuff to Kenneth Walker. I think it's a little bit more of a valuable handcuff because Kenneth Walker has had a history of going down. Um, so Charbonnet has been productive when he's been given the opportunity there. James Conner, uh, very similar to Aaron Jones. He's just kind of on a, on a downward trajectory here. Hopefully you can get a nice one-year deal with, uh, with, with a team and kind of maintain some production for one more season, but he doesn't have much value outside of that. And jumping down to the G2 here, we'll start with Audrey Gastamay. Had a stint where he was maybe going to be the starter. Now he's maybe not. Until then, we kind of don't know what to do with him. Tyler Algier has been relegated to pretty much what his role should have been last year, and that's Bijan's backup. And so he is a, a nice handcuff there. And, and he's a high uh, high ceiling guy if Bijan ever does miss any time. Jalen Wright, you know, I think he is probably going to replace Raheem Mostert there as the running back too. And you've seen some flashes from him this season. So I think do you think he's a nice stash in Dynasty. Rico Dowdle as well. You know, Rico was better, obviously, when that offense was being run by Dak Prescott. Um, now, I, I honestly don't think Rico Dow has a ton of future value, and that's kind of why he's this low. He's the lowest starting running back on this list aside, outside of somebody in the next year. And then Ray Davis. Uh, Ray Davis has had some flashes this year, but again, they've continued to give the, – their roles have stayed the same all season, even as Ray Davis has shown flashes. So I don't expect a ton of long-term value insulation for Ray Davis in Dynasty. Yeah. Then closing out with the H tier, it's going to be a, a bigger one with some notable guys. Nick Chubb uh, had a couple touchdowns last week. He's starting to look a little bit better. Super, still not super efficient. Uh, and, and long-term, I, I don't really know what to expect from Nick Chubb and if anyone's going to go out of their way to pay a guy who's had multiple ACLs tears at this point. Uh, what's the upside there? Javante Williams. I mean, back in the day, the dude was a late first round, early second round Dynasty pick just a few years ago. What a fall from grace for him he he has never really picked up from that injury ty j spears um is uh, again tied to tony pollard now for the next couple of years and he just has not been as good as what his potential ceiling could have been going into this season and i think pollard has definitely been the reason for that austin eckler going to continue to keep falling down our rankings uh he, he's just getting older he still is a really nice asset to own i i think for nfl teams production wise it's just going to be very boom bust not a lot of long-term value jordan mason Jalen warren a couple of backups uh Jalen warren is a guy that you're going to want to keep an eye on though because Najee Harris is going to be out the door this season Marshawn Lloyd uh we'll, we'll see what he can do he, he hasn't played at all this season between injury uh, appendicitis apparently yeah, yeah uh he and even before that they were looking like they didn't even love him in training camp so uh that that was that was a worry his vision he's very DeAndre Swift-esque in that he has terrible vision as a runner Sean <laughs> Tucker uh showed a flash this season we'll, we'll just give him a little nod here he had a great game when Rashad White went down with the injury alongside Bucky Irving and then Roshan Johnson getting some goal line carries in Chicago we'll see if he can build off that and get a little more volume uh the last third of the season and maybe even into next year so there you go 
our top, what, 51 running backs this year. Um, again, these are subject to change. They're midseason. These are going to change. It's very fluid, but that's what we got for you right now. Uh, also this week, if you do become an annual mother flocker using code domain, you do get two team blueprints. You also get version one of our rookie draft guide. Uh, this is going to include the high level analysis of the rookies right now, the ones you should keep on your radar. Uh, you also get the my teams, the rankings, trade calculator, all that. So like I said, flockfantasy.com slash domain. Make sure you use code domain. We appreciate you guys. Peace out. We'll see you later.